What's up guys? Joe Munoz, a onestepprep.com, home of your favorite type rating center where yes, we actually offer 737 and A3 type ratings. And we also offer the ATP CTP course. All right, hit the link so you can go to our site and see everything we offer. I want to chat with you in the video about auto throttles and why they're good, but actually why they can be your worst nightmare in a microburst situation on final approach. So there's actually a, a flight, it happened quite some time ago, it was an L-1011, Delta Flight 191, they're going into Dallas, and uh, the auto throttle in that airplane played a role in the unfortunate outcome, and ultimately what ends up happening is the following. Imagine for a moment that you are on this approach, any approach, could be a visual, an r and an eye it doesn't really matter, you're approaching the runway, and you fly into a microburst, all right? If you don't know what a microburst is, right, it's a very aggressive, a downward force that ultimately is a wind shear event, right? Sudden change in wind direction and or speed over a relatively short distance of the atmosphere. Not to get too theory related here, but the point being that if you are tracking inbound on this approach and you fly into a microburst, what is true is that the first thing you're gonna always anticipate and fly into is an increase in performance, a large headwind. And imagine for a moment that this microburst is blowing down, say, 50 knots of wind. You're going to first fly into a headwind. Now, the auto throttle is keeping a V-ref on the approach of, say, 140 knots. So we've got, and this number varies, okay, with various v uh, variables, altitude, um, uh, meaning density, altitude, weight of the aircraft, right? So there's a couple things, but roughly we'll say it's 140 knots indicated airspeed. You're coming inbound on the approach, the auto throttle is keeping thrust at a value that will keep 140 knots on the approach. Now what happens is when you take on a 50 knot increase of headwind, your indicated airspeed goes from the estimated 140 upwards of 190 knots. And the auto throttle says, wait a minute, I'm supposed to maintain 140. I don't wanna do 190 knots. So of course, what does the auto throttle do? it reduces thrust at a moment where you're flying into a shear and you very much as part of your wind shear recovery procedure are going to go to toga power so you're going to advance all this thrust in there but the auto throttle is actually reducing the thrust to get you back on what it thought you wanted which was 140 knots now on the delta 191 case going into uh, dallas this pretty much happened and when you look at some of the animations um, of this event, you can actually see where the crew did successfully advance the thrust, uh, but unfortunately the auto throttle uh, later on brought the thrust back because it took that thrust application and then said, well, wait a minute, I I'm fast. You wanted a lesser speed and it reduces the thrust. And so I guess the point I'm really getting to is remember that the auto throttle maintains indicated airspeed. And the result of that is when we have a wind shear where our indicated airspeed goes up, the auto throttle might peel off some of the power at a moment when you're going to need that power. Now we can really expand on the wind shear recovery a lot more and talk about how airspeed is really not what wins a wind shear uh, fight, it's actually angle of attack. We want to maximize angle of attack, which is why the recovery procedure on uh, the Boeing on the 737 is to actually go toga power and in and out of stick shaker as needed. You can literally ride that stick shaker to get maximum AOA. And in the, in the um, uh, A320, we go wind shear toga and uh, initially follow the flight directors, but we continue aft stick as needed in order to fight the shear. So you're really aiming for maximum angle of attack. And there's a lot, maybe more we could talk about with use of flight path vector and stuff like that, probably beyond the scope of the video. But just understand auto throttle could be good could be a bad thing in the case of a shear on the approach. So be ready when you see a large increase in indicated airspeed and you see that thrust lever start to reduce if you have auto throttles, you may need to disconnect and be ready to complete that wind shear recovery if indeed you are encountering a shear. Don't forget to disconnect the auto throttle. Now in the case of auto thrust, which is what we have on the Airbus, the 320, the auto thrust has a system called ground speed mini. If you just go on YouTube and search Ground Speed Mini A320, I'm probably going to pop up there on a video where I explain that. The short nutshell version of what Ground Speed Mini is, is that rather than maintain an indicated airspeed, it maintains a ground speed. So it can maintain 140 knot ground speed, assuming the speed is managed, 
for those that know what that means in the Airbus world. Um, and that is a benefit to you when we have this same scenario where we're encountering this, this down uh, burst or wind shear event. Because of course, imagine you take on, you're maintaining 140 knots indicated in a zero wind situation, that would be 140 knots of ground speed. You take on a 50 knot headwind, which drops off your indicated, uh, or not your indicated, but your ground speed to 90 knots. So your indicated goes up to 190, but your actual ground speed now drops off to 90. Meanwhile, the auto thrust system is trying to maintain a ground speed and it sees the ground speed reducing as a result of the headwind. So what does it do? It adds power, the exact opposite of what we just described for an aircraft with an auto throttle system as opposed to the auto thrust on the A320. So pros and cons to both uh, automation, I would say in, in large, picture, right, big picture, is very much a good thing, but it could be a bad thing in certain scenarios, this being one of them, all right? Hopefully this video makes sense. As always, like, subscribe, share, comment, turn on your notifications, and please come visit us here in Miami, all right? If you're looking for ATP, CTP, you want to acquire an FAA ATP license, you want to get type rated on the 737, the A320, you want to do an interview prep, you're going through initial new hire, recurrent, or upgrade at your carrier, and you just want to feel more not only competent, but confident going into the training. Go to the site, onestepprep.com, hit the contact us tab. We'll set you up with something that I assure you will prove valuable. All right, Juan and Joe, your friends in training program success. We'll see you in another video.